Welcome to NetSmart Care Threads, a podcast where human services and post-acute leaders across the healthcare continuum come together to discuss industry trends, challenges, and opportunities. Listen as we uncover real stories about how to innovate and improve the quality of care for the communities we serve. Let's get into the show. My name is Keith Boucher and I'm your host. I serve as a community strategist at NetSmart. On the podcast, we're talking about some of the issues affecting teens today in a unique way one organization is using media to communicate their message. To talk with me about this, I'm excited to be speaking with Ashley Hall, Grant's Marketing Manager, joining us today from Centerstone, a not-for-profit health system providing mental health and substance use disorder treatments nationally through the operation of outpatient clinics, residential programs, and inpatient hospital, and through the use of telehealth. Ashley, welcome to the program. Hi, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. Fantastic. Uh, Some things never go out of style, no matter your age. One of those things is comic books. I've been a fan since I was 10 or 11. And full disclosure, I'm wearing a Nightwing t-shirt under my button down. It's my son's. I asked to borrow it for this. This sounds like an awesome way to reach audiences of all ages, but especially a younger population. Yes, we think so. Um, At Centerstone, something we like to do is something we call edutainment. We love to educate these youth while entertaining them. A big thing is really meeting kids, teens, youth, where they are. You have to go to them. They might not always come to you and they might not always respond to some big lecture, but if you can kind of find your way into something they're already doing to educate them while they're entertained, that seems to really help reach them. So um, in this case, going to them in the form of comic books has just been really important and and fun. Yeah, you got to find a way in and uh, comic books seems to be a great way to do that and fun, absolutely fun. How did you come up with the idea for the comics? Well, I I love to tell this story. It's really neat. So my colleague, you know, several years ago um, named Ian and I were at a conference and Centerstone had a booth there. So we were sitting at the booth doing our thing, talking about our services and what we had to offer. And he took a break and was like, I'm going to go walk around and see what the other booths have. And then he comes back with a big smile on his face, holding up a graphic novel. It was a Martin Luther King Jr. graphic novel. He runs up to me and he's like, Ashley, Ashley, Ashley. And I'm like, what, what, what? And he said, do you think we could do comic books related around teen risky behaviors? And we were always trying to think of creative ways to reach kids at the time. And he was a super, he's a super creative guy. And, and I kind of thought for a minute and we started, you know, kind of talking about it, talking about the idea and brainstorming. And he, and we were like, you know, I think we can. So I called my supervisor and I said, you know what? Um, I know we've got some money in the budget for some projects. Do you think it could be utilized for comic books? And she said, yeah, go for it. And um, from, you know, there on, we started, you know, figuring out how to do it. It was all born, you know, right there that, you know, the Cinderstone booth at a a conference. That must have been exciting to come up with some new idea and know, well, have a good idea that it had never been really done before in the marketplace and to be able to bring something fun into work. And like you said, meet kids where they are. Yeah. Oh yeah. Super fun. That was definitely the birth of probably my, you know, my, the highlight of my career so far. So yeah. So, yeah big fun. Was Ian uh, or were you a, a comic book fan growing up? Full disclosure, no. I learned more about comic books during this experience than I had ever known. Ian was was a bit. He knew way more. And fortunately, we had another um, person on Centerstone staff, our graphic designer, Mike, our Centerstone graphic designer, Mike, and he was a big comic book fan. So we were able to kind of pull from other people's knowledge. You know, I, I you know, I love Wonder Woman and that sort of thing, but I did, I certainly didn't have deep comic book knowledge. <laughs> and Mike draws, draws all the comics. No, no. Um, Mike is Centerstone's graphic designer. And we actually um, were able to hire actual comic book artists Fantastic. Um, that specialized in that for the comic books. Great. 
So every superhero has an origin story. How did you arrive at Spark and how yeah. you chosen? Well, um, you know, after that conference, we, you know, got back to the office and we're like, okay, what do we do next? And we said, well, we need to kind of think of some ideas, just kind of sit down and just have a brainstorming meeting. Exactly. And so what we did is Ian, myself and Mike, our Centerstone house graphic designer met because we knew Mike would have lots of great um, comic book information. So we went into that meeting and my first request was with the superhero be a girl. I'm like, I want her to be a girl. So <laughs> it's like, it's going to be a girl. So we did that and they were like, okay. And um, I was like, we don't have enough girls, superheroes. And then I said, I want her to be relatable. I want her to be a teen girl that is a normal teen girl facing all the pressures and risky behavior, temptation during the day. And then I want her to also be a really awesome superhero on the side. You know, that's, that's kind of, you know, what I wanted her to have. I wanted her to have those typical um, teen issues. And, and, and so we kind of started with that, you know, okay, we're going to have a typical teen girl. She's going to look like a t- typical teen girl, that sort of thing. And then Mike and Ian had all kinds of fun coming up with, okay, what kind of powers is she going to have? What's she going to do, you know? And so they came up with a wonderful story about how she has this amulet and there's this, it gives her this power that has this electric force and she inherited it from her mother and her mother died and she, you know, got it and and all the, you know, this wonderful backstory that they had a lot of fun making. So, you know, after that, you know, I kind of told, you know, Ian, I was our super creative writer guy and said, okay, okay, Ian, there's your thing, go write it. I like how the backstory isn't, you know, the first comic has a lot of the backstory, but it's not all just dumped right in that first one. In other comics, you get little pieces of of the backstory and where it came from. That's great. Absolutely. So before diving in and making the investment in time and money, I'm guessing you must have had some idea if this would be effective Can you talk about some of the steps, the pre-work you did to validate? Sure, sure. So, you know, we had that initial meeting that I just talked about, but, you know, right around that same time, you know, within a few weeks, we had um, the opportunity to go into a classroom. You know, Centerstone has a lot of work in school classrooms, and we were able to partner with one of our prevention teams, you know, one of our prevention grant teams and go into a classroom they were working in and in a middle school. And we talked to the kids. We said, you know, what do you think about this? Do you guys like comic books? And of course they all said yes. And we said, you know, we took them, um, we went and bought some comic books and we took them kind of samples and we said, what kind of paper do you like? What do you like the superheroes to, to look like? What do you want the drawing to look like? What kind of topics do you think would be good? Because Something that we really, really wanted was we wanted this comic book to look like something that they would pick up off of a shelf and read anyway. I didn't want it to be some cheesy, I don't know, I I didn't want it to look too educational. I didn't want the kids to read it as cheesy or think it was cheesy. I wanted it to look like something they would pick up anyway. So we did a lot of kind of research on ways to make sure it looked exactly like a quote unquote real comic book. And when talking with the kids, we said, okay, what topic should we start off with? And they were all at that time super interested in media and phones and the way kids were getting in trouble with their phones and doing irresponsible, risky things with their phones. So that's how we landed on the first topic of, you know, sex messaging. And then the next step after that is we actually were able to go to Nashville's Comic-Con and kind of talk to graphic artists and find our first comic book artist right there. Found one that we thought had a heart for what we were doing and picked him. Fantastic. So you had a focus group with the audience of uh, people you were trying to reach, right? Correct. Correct. We went straight to the kids. Right. I know that uh, in previous discussions, you mentioned that some of the funding came from a grant. Can you tell us about the grant? Yeah. Centerstone has been just so lucky and fortunate for the past, gosh, a little over 10 years now to have funding from the Department of Health and Human Services, Office of Public Affairs. 
And we're currently in our third round of this funding and it's focused to, towards um, teen pregnancy prevention and associated risky behaviors. And they have been able to fund the comic books. You know, that grant has funded the comic books and allowed us to, you know, get creative with that education. It's that federal grant's been such a blessing for us. That's great. And that's a, a, a unique way to uh, make use of the grant. I haven't heard of uh, folks using federal grants for comic books. So congratulations on that. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, it's a small part of what that, com that grant does. And yeah. it's, it's been wonderful. Fantastic. There's six total comic books now, right? Correct. And I've read all six. Some of the topics would have been relevant when I was a teenager long ago, back in the late 70s and early 80s. Mm -hmm. Two of them deal with technology that wasn't around back then. Can you touch on each of the comics and the mental health topics that are relevant to teens today that are covered? Absolutely. This is the first comic book. It is Spark and the Sex Message That Nearly Destroys Her. So this is the first one that came from that feedback group. It has our origin story in it, where, and she also finds herself fighting sex messaging after her boyfriend convinces her to send him a photo. So at the very beginning, you know, we're showing that she is an amazing superhero, but she is also very, you know, very vulnerable to all the same risky behaviors that kids today face. So, spark in the sex message that nearly destroyed her. And then for the second comic book, we took a break from Spark because we wanted to be able to kind of reach a little bit younger of an art audience. And in this one, we've got some bullying that occurs into it in a school for superheroes. So that's kind of, you know, interesting and, um, Kind of get to see how superheroes deal with bullying because even they get bullied sometimes. And here is our third comic book, Spark and the Sobering Truth. And this one, Spark finds herself at a party with alcohol misuse. And she has to figure out how to handle that. And she also discovers that a lot of times when you use alcohol, you make decisions that might not be so safe. So she's able to kind of tackle that and maybe save the day. There's a twist at the end of that one. I'm not gonna reveal it. I know, I didn't want to reveal it. I was no. like, eh, I gotta leave some stuff to like, you know, I can sure. give it away. <laughs> um, and here is Spark Caught in the Net. And this one's really neat. Um, we were able to partner with Centerstone's foster care services department for this one. And so the story is focused around a girl who is in foster care and she finds herself, you know, caught in a situation with someone that she met online and it's not so safe. And Spark has to kind of come in and and help that situation out because we all know, you know, people aren't necessarily what they seem or what they, you know, uh, make themselves out to be online. So online safety. And then we have Spark and the dangerous switch. And in this one, Spark fights the opioid ep epidemic and opioid misuse. We dive into illegal drug manufacturing and how you never know what you get, you're going to get. You don't know what those pills could be tainted with and that it's so dangerous to take any type of medication, any type of pill that has not been prescribed to you by a doctor. And yeah, we can really dive into how that can be super scary stuff. And again, Spark has to save the day because we, you know, that can be very dangerous, even fatal. Spark and rising through... The Ashes. Now, this one is really, um, you mentioned earlier how we dive into Spark's story throughout other comic books. And this one has a neat kind of flashback back to learning about um, Spark's mother's um, death and the feelings that Spark had around that and some depression that she experienced going through that. And we're able to kind of talk about the therapy process and you know, mental health services. And again, we were able to really dive in and talk with Centerstone's experts about that process. So this one, you know, spark rising from the ashes is kind of, you know, depression. I love how they're dealing with top with real life topics that kids are dealing with and teens are dealing with. And for that matter, adults are dealing with. And 
I love how when you stated about the origin story and when you created Spark, you talked about you wanted a real life, relatable teenage girl. And in yes. some of these, like the sexting one and the alcohol one, we see her bending to peer pressure, right? She wants people to like her or she thinks this is, this is what I have to do to be accepted. Just like we would see a lot of folks today, a lot of kids today. Really, yes, you know, and you know, we wanted to show that nobody's immune to this. Even a superhero deals with these types of things. You know, every kid, everybody, everywhere has these choices to make and these issues to face. So who, who are you folks reaching with these? Are you focused on a single state? Yeah. Like I mentioned before, you know, this is all grant funded and the grant does primarily focus on the Middle Tennessee area right now. So our distribution, you know, is mainly Middle Tennessee, but we have been so fortunate, you know, like I said before, we're able to, you know, we go to conferences. So we're able to present and exhibit at conferences all over the country and distribute these comic books. And therefore, we've been able to share the comic books with people all over the country beyond just Middle Tennessee. So primarily Middle Tennessee, but again, all over the country, really, at times. And we're also online, you know, at centerstonecomics.org, so anybody can see them. Great. And about how many do you think you've distributed? Oh, yeah. Um, I'd say 60,000 plus at this point. Yeah. Um, we've I've been able to distribute over the years. You know, we've been incredible. distributing them since, what, 20... 20- 14, I guess now. And um, yeah, it's been pretty amazing. It's been Congratulations exciting. on that. Yeah. So I love how at the end of each book, there's a list of questions to spark. Yes, I used spark and that pun was intended. Conversation and create real life examples for the reader. Tell us about that and how organizations are using it. Yeah. Um, in the feedback group, I mentioned the teacher in that feedback group, I distinctly remember her pulling me aside. You know, we were talking to the the group and saying, hey, if you could put a worksheet or some questions or some sort of activity in this comic book, it would be amazing. It would make it so much more effective for teachers to use in the classroom. And I said, wonderful idea. So we did it. And that's another way that we've been able to, of course, use Centerstone's clinicians and experts to kind of put you know, the discussion questions and the clinical and um, information in them, you know, use our expertise in that way as well. So it's, it's been nice, but we really wanted to make them usable for teachers, parents, clinicians, anybody that works with youth. We wanted them to really be able to use them and bring the message home in that way. Even, you know, like I said, it's not just questions. We also try to put information about serious topics. At the end of Spark and the Dangerous Switch, there are statistics from the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, you know, CDC, and Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, and, a, you know, lists of questions. You know, we wanted to really put information in there as well as, you know, spark conversations about critical thinking and, you know, that sort of thing. And then, and rising from the ashes you know, discusses crucial topics of depression and suicide prevention among t- today's youth. And that comic includes a four page insert with information and warning signs of suicide and what to do when somebody might, might be at risk, as well as details about the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. We really wanted to provide you know, that serious information in there as well. You know, if, uh, someone reads the comic book and and feels the need to reach out for help. Can you give an example of how one of the schools are, is using the comic book series? Yes, we had some wonderful information from here in Tennessee, Haywood County schools in Brownsville, Tennessee uses the comic books during their guidance counselor class sessions. The school health count coordinator, introduces the topic with facts about Tennessee and Haywood County's rankings and whatever topic the comic book addresses. And, you know, she said she distributes the comic books and they read them together and then together they answer the questions back. And when we got that information from her, it was just so exciting. You know, that's what you want. You know, you create these things and you put them out into the universe and you're like, okay, are they doing anything? But when you get stories like that, you know, it's 
wow, we are edutaining. <laughs> That's great. What kind of response have you been getting from parents and families as well? You know, what we find there is they're such a wonderful conversation starter. So like I said, it looks like a comic book that the team could bring home or want to read anyway. And so got a comic book, you know, laying there in the kitchen and you can talk about it. You can say, oh gosh, what's this about? Who's this superhero? What's, what's going on? And the book takes kind of the scariness out of an uncomfortable topic. You can talk about what the superhero de- did and that takes pressure off themselves, off themselves, you know, the, the parent and the kid, you know, you can say, what did Spark do with this in, in this situation? What do you think about how Spark's dad handled it? What do you think about the villain, you know, and what the villain's doing? And it's not, you know, that way it's not directly talking about the teenager, directly talking about the parent. I think that really helps to take the pressure off. And, it, you know, we also, you know, I think help, you know, guide them in the conversation. So it helps bridge the gap between teenagers and adults when it comes to having difficult conversations. I think so. I think so. And in talking about comic books, you know, like we said before, you know, they're kind of timeless, you know, so, you know, the parent might have comic book stories or some comic book nostalgia of their own. (laughs) Yeah, I've brought four kids through uh, the teenage years. I know sometimes it's just the start. It's how to start that conversation. And then once you can get get in the door and then you can get going and it can flow from there. But just to start that. So comic book is a great. Yeah, you know, we say anything you can get your hands on. TV, music, comic books, you know, anything. What would you say is the biggest success of the project so far? You know, of course, the success stories, somebody coming and saying that they've used the comic books and they've been successful. You know, the kids are picking up the comic books. The kids love the comic books. Those are really great. But I think another level of this for us is really when we have sparked (laughs) creativity in other organizations or in other educators where they've said, oh my goodness, this is a great idea. I wonder if we could edutain in our own way. I wonder if we could find a way to teach about risky behaviors rather than just lecturing. So I think if we're kind of sparking creativity in others, I really like that. That really excites me. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure sign of success is when Mm -hmm. other folks are getting excited about it as well, using the information provided. So what's next? Do you have any plans for new topics for the comics? Uh, We're always thinking about new, new topics. I'd say we're in the brainstorming stage right now. We're not currently creating another comic book, but we're definitely thinking about it. Okay. Maybe a new superhero, maybe middle-aged with uh, silver hair, I'm thinking. <laughs> you never know. Um, no, I want Spark. I, I'm really, you know, I'm kind of attached to Spark. Great. I want Spark to stick around, but maybe she needs a partner in crime. Not crime, a partner in solving crime, <laughs> fighting crime. <laughs> we'll see. Great. Uh, yeah, we'd love we'd love to see more of uh, more of Spark. If listeners are interested in learning more about the comics, where should they go? Where can they go online? Of course, they can go to um, CinderstoneComics.org and see our comics. And if they have any general questions, they can always make those through our website. We have like a contact us section that they can click on and um, ask any question they need to, and we'll get back right, right back with them. Great. So centerstone.org slash comics. Yes, please. Well, that's great stuff. Ashley, thank you so much for being here and sharing with our audience. Oh, thanks for having us. Loved it. Great. And thanks to Centerstone, we're happy to make available a complete set of the six comic books to the first 50 listeners who like the podcast. Click the link in the podcast notes to be brought to a page where you can enter in your information to receive a set. Until next time, thanks for listening. At NetSmart, we understand the challenges facing provider organizations. Our team will help you navigate changing value-based care models with solutions and services that make person-centered care a reality. We'll equip you with technology and services that provide holistic, real-time views of care histories that inform better decision-making and better outcomes. Visit us today at ntst.com. NetSmart, serving you so you can serve others. 
Thanks for listening to the NetSmart Care Threads podcast. Through collaboration and conversation, we can work together to make healthcare more connected than ever before and better support the communities we serve. To ensure you never miss an episode, please subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. If you use Apple Podcasts, we'd love for you to give us a quick rating for the show. Just tap the number of stars that you think the podcast deserves. Until next time.